Hey you guys, this is Raphael. It's buckle time again. You guys seem to like them, so we're going to keep talking about them. I appreciate you guys watching these. I go back and it surprises me sometimes. I look through the list of videos. The ones I think, man, they're going to like those. They're going to watch a lot of them. They don't get many watches, but uh, hey, whatever y'all like. That's why they make chocolate and vanilla. If I'm like Burger King. You have it your way. So we're going to talk about a buckle that... I think is is a cool design. This is one of the two-piece Confederate officers, well, not necessarily an officers. It's a two-piece Confederate sword belt buckle. Had a guy order one of these yesterday and he said, is that strictly for officers? And I said, not really, because it's made to go on the sword belt. And the sword belt would have originally looked like this. I'm gonna find one and we're gonna get a picture up there and I'm gonna show you. Had hangers coming down so it could hang the sword on the side of it. And they're made where you can do a quick on and off uh, of the belt itself because you don't walk around camp all day with your sword on your side. So they're a two piece, often referred to as a tongue and wreath. These show up in a lot of variations. This one is very distinct. See that tongue? how the letters on the end of the letters, it has uh, large round portions. Those are known as serifs and they are called a ball serif. Most of them end up just like regular letters stopping and going. These have big punctuation at the end of the letters. So it's called a ball serif. And this version is actually a tougher version to find and it has the back of the plate like this, it'd be a little easier to see here, but I still like showing to you. I have to use my hands or I can't talk to you guys. It has a flat back. And that's one thing that you look for on these is uh, that they do match. That's what it goes with this one. Other ones might technically fit it, but that's not what it left a factor with. Cause when you see these that are on the original belt, I've only had a couple over the years, they always show up with this style back. So the ball serif design, and, and the guy yesterday, I enjoy talking with people about things like that. Cause he said, well, where was it made? We didn't know because the guys didn't care about having their name on it. They cared about getting paid for it. So they just mass produced them. They're just a buckle. And a buckle was a tool that they used. It wasn't something that they just were super proud of. These have been copied a lot. Like all of the two-piece buckles, there are a couple of guys out there that have turned off a lot of collectors because they have copied them. Be sure that you know who you're getting it from. Because a guy said yesterday, he says, I know them letters are only as good as who writes them. And he says, I like yours, and that made me proud. I ain't walked on the water, so if I screw up, I'll make it right. And that's all you can ask out of somebody. So be sure that they will put it in writing. If they won't put it in writing, that it's original, don't buy it. Simple. Because these have been copied a lot. You, There's a few things that you look for on a Doug Confederate buckle. Since they are two pieces, you like to see that the colors match or are very close. Because when they were making these, they would make a batch of the wreaths. They would make a batch of the tongues. And sometimes, even from the factory, the color of the brass that they were using would have a little bit different mixture. And so it would be a little bit different color. And that's just the way they were when they made them in big batches because these are sand cast. And that's the thing you look for. Most of the ones that are modern made are wax cast. And they won't have that fine grainy looking detail uh, to the brass. You want to see that. If it's that old, you want to see a beautiful patina. And this one, it's got it. Check it out. It's a nice one all the way around. Uh, the, it has no restoration. You need to be careful because you can imagine the pressure that you put on these, taking them on and off. If there's a casting flaw anywhere in that brass, if you put the wrong torque on it, it's going to break it. And that's just what you expect on these. So a lot of them have been restored. One guy says, I don't like that restored stuff. And I'm like, I don't mind it at all as long as I know it and it's priced accordingly. Because what are you going to do? Just not appreciate a piece of history because it has a blemish on it? Have it fixed and enjoy it. <laughs> I'd a lot rather uh, have it restored and looking like it did then than gnarled and bent up in a case. 
that's just me. That's again, why they serve chocolate and vanilla. Uh, they're cool buckles. And a lot of people like to know a couple of things about a buckle, the style uh, and where it was found. This one was found in a place you usually don't see this style buckle excavated. Uh, the verbal history, and because these are, uh, you have to go with verbal history. Like that one was dug at Gettysburg. Hopefully it was, but it's verbal history because unless you were there and saw it roll out of the ground for the first time, you don't know that. So uh, the verb, and that's why I put in my descriptions, the verbal history is that this buckle came from, this one came from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Battle of Stones River. Uh, end of 1862, January 1st, 1863. Uh, it, I said that completely wrong. This one came from Shelbyville, Tennessee. And all you guys besides Middle Tennessee, like where in the hell is Shelbyville, Tennessee? Shelbyville, Tennessee is where the Confederacy amassed before the Battle of Stones River at the end of uh, 1862, uh, first day of 63. They were there, moved up, fought the battle, and then when they lost, they backed back down to Shelbyville. So, a lot of cool, cool, cool Confederate stuff has come out of Shelbyville over the years. It's been hit hard with metal detectors, so you have a hard time finding a bullet there today unless you have the special place to hunt. But over the years, some wonderful things come out. This one is generally seen up in that Northern Virginia area. So it's kind of odd that it was from there, but the collection it came out of, I have no reason to doubt. And that's what you have to go on is a gut feeling because unless you were there and saw it roll out for the first time, not replanted by your buddy that wanted you to think he dug one, we don't know for sure. So I go by attributed to and reported history uh, from Shelbyville, Tennessee, walking horse capital of the world. Uh, this one is, and there's a book, it's it's an older book, but still the best thing going. My buddy Steve Mullinax, he and I, right before he passed, uh, wrote about Confederate belt buckles and plates. This one is listed as 013 in the revised edition, and it gives you the measurements and the styles. It's just a great buckle all the way around. And if you want a, a two-piece sword belt buckle for your collection, I got you covered. So, Confederate buckles, two pieces, made to carry a, a sword belt, beautiful patina, no restoration, um, honest history, cool buckle. Don't be afraid to add one today. Go on there. I try to buy every Confederate belt buckle that I can because I like them, and they always sell. Sold two or three yesterday, which was a good day. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it because I needed it. I just bought one heck of a collection, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got to sell as much as I can. So go on to the Shiloh Relics. Check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Um, got to spend some time with uh, some of my friends and family uh, yesterday. Got to have lunch, and... I was sitting there thinking, and be sure that you tell those people that you take for granted every day, be sure to tell them thank you, because it's so easy to not say thank you, it, and take that one second and just say thanks. For somebody that, uh, when you think about it, there'll be a few folks that are there for you constantly that you will have not intentionally but you hadn't told them thank you, that you appreciate them being your friend. Take a second, give them a call, say, I just want you to know I was thinking about you. I did that yesterday. I called two of my friends that I hadn't talked to in a while and uh, said, just had you on my mind. I wanted you to know, I hope you're okay. Take that time, be that person, be that light. If you watch the one that I did just for this, be that Clara Barton, be that person that makes a difference. I love you guys and I'll catch you next time.